Technology Dental College and Research Center, Dirtankar Mahavir University, in association with Institution Innovative Council and Indian Academy of Oral Medicine and Radiology. Today's topic is on innovations in geriatric oral health and oral physicians' perspective by our eminent speaker, Dr. Pradhiman Varma, Professor and Head of Department of Oral Medicine and Radiology, Aligarh Muslim University, Aligarh. I welcome you all and uh, I welcome our principal, sir, Dr. Madish Goel, on this forum. And I also welcome Dr. Vinay Reddy, the President of Indian Academy of Oral Medicine and Radiology. I welcome our uh, principal, sir, to say a few words on this occasion. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sunil. Yes, sir. Am I audible, Dr. Sunil? Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Okay, thank you very much for the lovely introduction. And uh, first of all, I would like to welcome uh, Dr. Pradyuman. How are you, Dr. Pradyuman? Me fine, sir. Long time. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. <laughs> long time, sir. So all Actually, fine. Time. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. So all fine. So this is one of the platform that keeps us connecting each and every time, yes, even if it is not on the virtual platform. So any anyhow. So today your topic uh, innovation in uh, geriatric oral health quite an uh, exciting topic, I suppose, and quite innovative as well. So I welcome all the participants also, and let us see what uh, Dr. Newman has to say today on this platform regarding this particular topic. So I hope everybody is going to enjoy this lovely session. And thank you, Dr. Sunil, once again for uh, providing all these platforms, uh, continuing dental education uh, program platforms for all the students as well as all other participants to participate and uh, learn a lot. Thank you. Please go yes. ahead. Thank you. So Thank much, you very sir. much. Thank okay. you, sir. So this Thank time, you. I think uh, we have been uh, crossed 175 registration from all over the India. Oh, that's many great. States. That's, that's really great. great. That's really great. That's really great. Thank you, sir. Thank you for kind words. Now I welcome Thank our uh, president, Dr. Vinay Kumar Reddy, to say a few words on this occasion. Over to you. Yeah. Good afternoon. Uh, thank and you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Thank Sunil, for inviting me on this platform. And uh, I think uh, last week also I've attended on 16th, there was one yes, TV yes, program yes. from your yeah, side. Yeah. Okay. So today again, uh, there's another. So anyhow, I congratulate the management and uh, principal Dr. Manish Goel for uh, giving this opportunity on behalf of the Tirthankar Mahavir Dental College and Research Center, Tirthankar Mahavir University. And also congratulate Dr. Sunil uh, for having take up, uh, taken up uh, this. And uh, till now, I think so many CD programs he has conducted. And uh, my very good friend, uh, Dr. Pradyuman Verma, also who is a speaker for uh, today's topic, Innovations in Geriatric Oral Health. And all these things are going uh, together uh, in the perspective of uh, OMR Day celebrations. So all over India, so many programs are going on. And I'm very happy and uh, uh, please try to continue to conduct such programs in future also. And thank you, thank you Dr. Sunil. And uh, uh, I hope all the participants will be satisfied with uh, Dr. Pradyuman Verma. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank, thank you, you Dr. Vinay, for supporting you and uh, and thanks uh, we have today. Thank you for special thanks to you for accepting our invitation to be in this forum. So and uh, I introduce our uh, today's speaker, Dr. Pradyuman Marma, is the professor and chairman, Department of Oral Medicine, Radiology and Oral Pathology and Microbiology. He has completed uh, BDS in 2005 and MDS in 2009 from Punjab, and uh, he has got a uh, post first graduate diploma in forensic science in 2012 and the fellowship in forensic odontology in 2016 and is presently editor in chief of Infofo and uh, he is a eminent he is credit to many publications uh, both international and, uh, and uh, national journals and uh, he is an eminent speaker and a good friend of mine so i introduce i welcome to the forum on this online program uh, dr patil what are you doing? Uh, sir, should I share the uh, screen now? Yes, 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 yes. So my screen is visible, sir? Yes, sir, the screen is visible. Uh, you have to just magnify it. Yeah, I think it's magnified, sir. Is it okay? No, no, no. no. You have to. From my side, uh, sir, yeah. magnified, sir. Is it okay? Is it okay? You can start now. Yeah. Sir, so, uh, first of all, uh, good afternoon to one and all. 
and sir thank you so much for inviting me to this platform uh, i mean to say i want to share that today we are on almost on way towards our national oral medicine and radiology day so uh, on the eve of this uh, uh, national oral medicine and radiology day so it's uh, what maximum we can discuss than the what maximum good we can discuss than that uh, uh, the most neglected portion of our society that is the didactic population so uh, so as a part of this uh, or national oral medicine and radiology day, today we all are here so we all discuss about the most neglected part of the oral health uh, towards our the most uh, important part of the society that is the didactic population so the innovations in the didactic oral health the oral physicians perspective so uh, so should i start hello sir i am audible to all of you yeah you are audible you can start yeah. you can continue yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank so uh, thank you so much sir uh, for my nice introduction and uh, uh, thank you for that uh, monisha and uh, venerati sir for joining us uh, for a few minutes at least uh, i come across I, it it will be very boosting when such people they'll be at the background and they'll help you to make up with this presentation so uh, today uh, i'll be starting a topic that health is not only a moral obligation and a basic human right health is pure and sound economics so this is uh, the background that health is very important in today's life so aging what is aging basically aging is a progressive intrinsic and uh, a universal process that occurs in every living being as a result of the interaction between individuals genetics and the environment so in this photograph you can see that how the the didactic or how the uh, elderly people they be happy when you'll put their put your hands over the shoulders that means at this at one time when do, when these people they used to put the hands on our shoulders now it's a time of us to put the hand over their shoulders so uh, brazil was the first country in the world to recognize and establish the specialty of didactic dentistry in 2001 so being uh, india still we are uh, on way towards it but yes brazil is far ahead of us regarding that recognizing the uh, i mean to say recognizing the specialty of didactic dentistry so uh, very concisely if i'll go to very short about that uh, stats part of the genetic population it's seen that almost 96% of the adult a65 or older hand activity one in five adult a65 or older hand an untreated tooth decay about three in five adult a65 years or older hand a gum disease cancers of the mouth are primarily found in older adults the mean age is almost 63 all these stats will actually give us a worrying clue that yes we are neglecting this part of the <coughs> population so the oral health should be for all and with this today i am going to start with my topic that with the, these are the following contents we are going to have it today that is what is didactics and what is didactic dentistry the factors influencing the oral health status of the elderly population a changes affecting the various parts or various structures of the oral cavity then the relationship between oral and the general health in geriatric practice then finally the role of the oral physician so very important thing to understand that what is geriatrics and what is geriatric dentistry so geriatrics is a branch of the dental sciences which is concerned with the effects of aging upon the occurrence prevention and treatment of the dental diseases whereas geriatric dentistry emphasizes the dental care for the elderly population and focuses upon the patient with a chronic physiological physical and psychological changes or morbid conditions so after going through these two definitions it is very important to have a bit clue about the epidemiology of the geriatric population in india so where we stand today so elderly in the elderly in the world population is expected to increase rapidly from 10% to sir, sir. hello hello yeah. uh, dr pradhuman aapka slide change nahi ho raha i think you have to sir, check yeah once uh is it okay sir can you change the slide no i think it's not showing it's not showing yeah it's not changing oh, actually ha uh, actually i i once uh, now it is okay fine fine now it's uh, now i can see yes 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 is it okay now sir yeah yeah now according to who correct that's what that yes, was the slide yes yeah you can continue yes. so these are the contents i am going to have uh, today so first is what is zerodontics and what is didactic dentistry so zerodontics is a branch of the dental science which is concerned with the effects of aging upon the occurrence prevention and the treatment of the dental diseases whereas didactic dentistry emphasizes on the dental care for the elderly population and focuses upon the patient with chronic physiological physical and psychological changes or morbid conditions <laughs> before we'll go in detail about this things let's have a look over the epidemiological part of our didactic population where we stand today 
So the elderly in our world population is expected to increase from 10% in 2000 to 15% in 2025 and 21.1% in 2000, 20, 000, or sorry, 2050. So that gives us a hint that yes, the number of the genetic people or the genetic populations going to increase with the increasing uh, facilities. So we are going to have a longer lifespan as compared in the past. 70% of the world population, they are residing in the developing countries. And yes, one uh, ours is one of that. So if we we'll talk about the India, the genetic population in India is projected to reach 149 million, 149 million by the year 2023, a drastic increase from 81 million 2002. So you can see that values that will give you a hint that where we are and where we are going to stand after a few years. So it is very difficult. <coughs> so it is very, uh, it is very difficult to uh, understand uh, that where when the aging or uh, process ends and when the disease process begins so what is the age to be called as old very important question now before starting with the today's topic is that we need to define that what is old what is geriatric age and what is an elderly so according to the world health organization the most developed countries have accepted the chronological age of 65 years or above as a definition towards an elderly or older people according to the united nations 60 plus years will be referred to as an older population on elderly but According to uh, Pearson et al, they are saying that old age or the elderly population, they can be broadly divided into three groups, young old, old old, and very old. This looks like to be very funny, but I mean to say this, this is his own opinion. But if we'll categorize the uh, didactic people about this, that young old means up to 75 years of age who are relatively healthy and active. On the other hand, old old means up to 85 years of age that varies from those being healthy and active for those managing an array of chronic diseases. <coughs> Whereas in case of very old, the over 85 years of uh, age, they are physically tyler. So another uh, classification uh, is given by the Attinger et al. According to him, the aging population can be categorized into three broad functional groups. I mean, to say based upon the function or based upon the activity of the elderly people, they will be classified as functionally independent older adults, trial older adults, functionally dependent older adults. So being in dentistry or when uh, when we'll talk about the dentistry, the functional definition of the elderly adult is based upon his or her ability to travel to seek services. The dental management of the elderly population is different from that of the general population. Why is it so? There are a few points that will differentiate the type of that, uh, I mean, to some management. Number one is age-related physiological changes. Then the complications of the chronic therapies or the conditions or the systemic diseases what the elderly people or the world genetic population already uh, suffering with and that complexes the treatment towards the dental care and thirdly is increased incidence of the physical and the mental disabilities and loss of the uh, congenitive behaviors at this age and finally the social concern of the elderly towards at this stage <coughs> so being an oral medicine and radiology physician being an old medicine radiology uh, uh, i mean to say uh, specialty or the oral physician will complete understanding of the biomedical sciences and the clinical medicine the most appropriate uh, they are the most appropriate health worker to meet the oral health care needs of the elderly as well as for those medically and pharmacologically compromised patients or individuals the world Organize, world health organization or who once in the discussion paper on the health and aged they have indicated that we can afford to get old in countries, regions, and international organizations enact active aging policies and programmers that enhance the health, independence, and productivity of the older men and women. So that means now it's a time to work over it, the time to plan and to act is now. So we are already very late being in the developing country. So this is the time we can give a proper care towards the genetic uh, section of the society. So the various factors that affect the genetic or the elderly population that includes number of the six factors. They are very important. If we understand these factors, we can easily come across why people are why we are lagging behind in giving that oral health care towards the <coughs> to the elderly. So number one, that is a dentist Pratiman, population ratio. Yes, Hello? I, uh, Pratiman, I think yes. the slide the slideshow is not there. I think you have to change. Uh, is it okay, sir? Yes, now we can see that. Uh, now I can see. You can Practice see, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The factors influencing the elderly population, number one is the uh, dentist to population ratio. Number two is the accessibility to oral health care facilities. Number three, socioeconomic status, literacy level, oral hygiene methods practiced over the years. And finally, the various oral abusive habits which are prevalent in the elderly population. 
so discussing about the first factor the uh, dentist population ratio which is uh, which was 1 is to 80000 two decades ago if i'll talk with the past it's almost two decades over it is 1 is to 80000 which has improved now to 1 is to 22 23000 which is very close to that of the medical doctor uh, ratio but still it is very disproportionate when we consider it in relation to the distribution of our elderly population as 80% of the elderly population live in the rural areas where the dentist population ratio is 1 is to 3 lakh. Whereas 20% of the elderly, they are in the urban areas where the population is 1 is to 27,000. So these stats will give you a hint that how grossly we are neglecting the oral health care for the elderly people. So this is the first factor that should be kept in mind. <coughs> Other one is the accessibility to oral health care facilities. The primary health care centers and the sub-center caters for the health uh, need to the rural population. Why we are talking about the primary health centers? Because as we already uh, come across from the last slide, that 80% of our population, elderly, elderly population, they are residing in the, uh, I mean to say, they are residing in the villages. So they, in the villages, primary health centers become the first source of uh, contact between a doctor and a patient. So they are the first contact point between the doctor and patient where they are, but, but these primary health centers, they are not well equipped for to provide the oral health care to uh, elderly with very few exceptions the oral uh, the primary health centers do not have the post of even a dental surgeon so that is alarming call towards an oral health care so thus only at the community levels we are able to get a some type of that oral health care towards our elderly people so the, in case of private practice is not luxative in the rural areas technology is advancing very fast because of this has led to increase in the lifespan and decrease in the mortality rates but at the same time, we had a problems to the economic and the social dependency of the elderly. What it means? It means that there is a collapse of today's, we have a collapse of joint family system, migration of the youth to the cities, shortage of the space in the dwellings in the urban areas, and the spiraling cost of the living had led to the withdrawal of the family support to the elderly. That actually creates a problem in the, uh, I mean to say, in the elderly population, which, are, which, which, which they feel start feeling that they are economically and socially uh, backward, they are not uh, properly supported. So if I'll call, again come up with the national stats, we come across there are approximately 685 old age homes in India with 15,636 inhabited. Uh, uh, slides yeah. are visible, sir? Hello? Uh, so Hello? Slides is uh, not visible. I'll, uh, now, now they're visible, sir? Uh, now it is not it is visible but it is not changing right? okay i'll keep it like this only sir okay now i can so, i can see that now. yes there are uh, there are around 685 old age homes in india with about 15636 inhabitants of these the ministry of social and health uh, welfare partially supports around 354 just to these values you can come across almost 50 percent of the uh, old age homes they are supported by the government whereas others they are at their own so under the national policies on the oral uh, older people, the government gives incentives and financial support to many NGOs wanting to start the oral old age homes and care facilities with the facilities generated employment for the uh, and care for the elderly. So oral health is uh, coming to the next very important factor. Oral health is directly proportional to the educational level. Though the literacy level has increased from 52.2% in 1991 to 69% in 2021, but still the gap is wide enough between literate and illiterate people. And we have come across that uh, the uh, recent studies from the, on the uh, recent studies regarding the literacy rate among the elderly, we come across that mostly 73% of the elderly they are not literate. So. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> sir, uh, slides are visible. Is there any problem or okay, sir? Visible, visible. So, oral abuse, uh, abusive language or oral deleterious habits in elderly population, the betel nut, quid, and tobacco chewing habits are widely prevalent. So, why this such type of deleterious habits are more prevalent about Gaadi elderly ho, because ho, of the. Uh, 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 hello? Sir, sir, uh, hello? Hello. Yeah, please, please, please tell me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sir, uh, the actually voice is coming from uh, yeah, other yeah, Somebody is uh, unmuted and I have made him mute. Yes, sir. And so, uh, yeah. oral okay. abusive habits. So, in case of elderly population, the betel nut, quid, and tobacco chewing habits are widely prevalent. And why it is prevalent? Because at the elderly age, there is a pressure of uh, loneliness and there is a pressure of uh, uh, difficult, uh, difficulty, difficulty in passing the time. So, because of all these things, there is increase in the deleterious habits. So in addition, smoking uh, cigarettes, BDs, reverse smoking in certain areas and alcohol consumption 
uh, over many years manifest in the elderly in the form of the discoloration of the teeth, a severe atresia, abrasion, uh, gingival dissection, mucosal lesions, as well as high prevalence of the premalignant lesions. So this this may result because of that uh, pressure, because of the loneliness among the elderly population. And uh, uh, coming to the air, age changes that affect the various structures in the oral cavity. So what are those age changes affecting the structures in the oral cavity? So number one, uh, I'll be discussing about the oral mucosa. In oral mucosa, due to the uh, reduced immunological reactivity, impaired DNA repair activity, <coughs> impaired carcinogen metabolism and atrophy of the oral tissues, particularly of the oral epithelium and the salivary glands. So there is a tendency towards the increased amount of the uh, lesions what we can encounter in the elderly population. So the oral mucosa, which is a first line of defense in all of us, it becomes uh, very pliable, it becomes very thin, smooth, dry, and susceptible to even of minor injuries, which are very easily resisted in case of the young population. So tongue loses its filiform papilla and it appears smooth. The tongue may be fissured, coated, and enlarged, especially in case of the edentulous individuals. The slivery species, they decrease with the progression of the age. So all these things along with it, <coughs> the oral mucosa, because it is thin, it is friable, it is more prone to develop, uh, the elderly people, they are more prone to develop the various type of the infections, either in the form of bacterial, viral, or fungal infections. And even the autoimmune disorders like erosive lichen planus, pamphigus vulgaris, burning mouth syndrome, all these are more prevalent in the elderly population due to the immune dysfunction, nutritional deficiencies, and the chronic conditions. Uh, uh, this is uh, there are many medical conditions that affects overall the smell and taste of the elderly, just like Alzheimer's disease, multiple sclerosis, diabetes mellitus. So most of these uh, diseases they are prevalent at the elderly age group, and that affects the uh, smell and the taste in these populations. The incidence of the oral cancer it increases with the advancing age. The typical sites of oral malignancy seen in the elderly that includes tongue, lips, buccal mucosa, floor of the mouth, posterior oropharynx. All these areas, they're more prone as compared to the other areas. So 90, if I'll go in bit detail about the old cancers, 90% of all the cancers, they are normally squamous cell carcinoma, while 10% of the cancers, they are from the salivary bone or lymphoid tissue origins. So many old individuals have a pigmented or benign soft tissues and hard tissue conditions, which are seen in the old cavity because of the aging. It's not because uh, they're normally seen at a young age. They're normally seen in the old age because of the various age-related phenomena we come across in the coming slides, why they are seen and how they are seen. So um, then first uh, coming to facial profile, after going through the oral mucosa, which is in that uh, not in the very good condition in the elderly people that overall are uh, now discussing about the facial uh, profile, facial, how the facial profile of the elderly is, they'll change with the age. The change of the facial profile is because of the uh, dental, because of the teeth extraction, because of the associated atrophy of the alveolar bone, the mandible resorption is seen and the muscles of mastication undergo atrophy due uh, because of the muscular processes of the bone. The arthritis that affects almost 49% of the individuals over the age of 65 years are and older. The osteoarthritis is one of the arthritis form that is very prevalent and very commonly seen, whereas rheumatoid arthritis mainly affects the female. So both these arthritic conditions, they affect the temporomandibular joint resulting in the degenerative changes in the condyle. And ultimately these changes can, all these changes can change the facial profile of the, the in this photograph, you can see that there is a prominent protruding chin, a wrinkling, which extend downwards from the oral commissure and the obtuse angle of mandible. All these results- You have to change the slide, uh, Pratima. Yes, sir. Uh, visible, sir? Yes, it's now visible, yes. Uh, the prominent, uh, the prominent protruding chin, the wrinkling that extend uh, downwards from the oral commissure and the uh, obtuse angle of mandible results due to the loss of the normal intermaxillary space in the elderly population. Uh, so this is all what uh, how we are able to uh, differentiate between the uh, elderly and the normal profile. So now discussing a bit about the teeth, that how, what are the various changes in the teeth we can see in elderly or genetic population? Number one, there is loss of the tooth transparency, that is tooth translucency, that is the surface details or parenchymata and the implication lines. They are very commonly seen. They are not, they are common changes that are seen in case of the aging. The dental pulp becomes very small. Why it is so? Because of the secondary dentine in the pulp stone formation and sometimes the root canals become totally scalarous. 
so when we'll go through the radiograph of the uh, uh, didactic population or i mean to say elderly people we come across all these changes in the radiographs and if we'll talk about the uh, clinical findings the presence of the v-shaped horizontal grooves in the teeth apical to the cementonormal junction that is a very common finding at times these may fracture leading to the at the site of the notching where there is a v-shaped notch formation if there is a bit of pressure from the masticative forces immediately there is a fracture <clears throat> As the gingival recession increases, the prevalence of the root caries, that is the most prevalent type of caries we can appreciate in the elderly, the root surface caries increases in dentate. Why is it so? Because of the continuous gingival recession, the lower part of the uh, root that is exposed to the environment and ultimately they become affected by the dental caries. So according to the National Institute of uh, Dental Research, the people over the age of 65 years have an average of 17 remaining natural teeth. So this will give us an idea that how that we are losing teeth as we are uh, as we are going uh, towards the elderly age. <clears throat> so this is the uh, this is a photograph where you can see that uh, uh, there is a tooth pain in the elderly, and immediately after the restoration, that smile comes on the face of the elderly. So this is the a graph or where you can see that how the root caries uh, they are progressing with the age. You will see that immediately there is increase in the spikes of the uh, caries root caries after the age of the sixties. So so among uh, discussing a bit about the wasting diseases or the different regressive changes which are seen in the elderly, number, uh, that is abrasion, atresion, and erosion. So abrasion, the pathological, what is basically abrasion, the pathological wearing of the tooth structure. Atresion, wearing down of the incisor or occlusal surfaces, physiological nature due to the years of the normal functioning. And the, uh, after use, I mean, to the years means, I mean, to say 30 to 40 or 50 years of usage of the teeth ultimately lead to that abrasion at region or erosion. So erosion is a loss of the tooth structure due to the uh, chemical action or the various type of the food stuff which are acidic in nature. So this leads to the at region abrasion or erosion. And one more type of the varying effect that is abstraction, which is nothing but the pathological loss of the heart tissue substances caused by the biomechanical uh, loading of the teeth. So after going through this thing, it's very important being a dentist or being an old physician, it's very important to preserve the natural dentition. We are saying that average 17 uh, teeth will remain after the at the age of the 60 plus. So our uh, main motive is to preserve the dental uh, natural dentition. Why? Because preserving the alveolar, because preserving a dentition, we are indirectly preserving the bone that is uh, maxilla and mandible. Without the normal dentition, the functional processes, functional pressures are lost and the physiological processes or resorption begins. If the teeth are not there, the functional processes, I mean to say the functional stresses uh, dominate over that alveolar bone and lead to the greatest bone loss that occurs in the first 18 months after extraction. And ultimately, the progresses at the rate of 0.5 millimeter per year. So you can just imagine that uh, after uh, extraction of uh, after extraction at the age of 70 or 80, how much of bone is resorbed if they are not being replaced by the teeth. So for many people, age 65 or of uh, 65 or over who lost their teeth in the young adulthood, adult, uh, edentulism has resulted in the severely resorbed mandibles and maxilla. So uh, among the maxilla, mandiba, maxilla and mandible, the resorption is mostly more troublesome in mandible as compared to the maxilla. Why is it so? Because once the mandible is resorbed, it's very difficult to replace the teeth. I mean to say the um, low dentures or the mandibular dentures become, uh, they are not very well fittedly seen in case of this population because we are not able to get some undercuts where we can give the support to the mandibular denture. At the same time, the patients start feeling the pain because of the continuous resorption. The, uh, the, uh, the low denture would bring pressure over the mental foramen. That is a pain which is being aggravated and uh, with time because of the overall resorption. So after going to the teeth, mucosa, now have a discussion over the periodontium, that how is the periodontium affected in case of the elderly people. Although the elderly show a greatest degree of periodontial destruction, the disease is thought to result from the cumulative results over the lifetime rather than the aging itself. So long-term usage of the teeth, ultimately the teeth, they're a part of the body, they have the endness. So if we are not keeping the oral hygiene proper, the long 60 or 70 years of usage of teeth ultimately come up with, end up with the periodontal destruction. So secondly, the continuous use of the tobacco, the use of the dental services infrequently and the history of the periodontal disease have a plaque and calculus deposits, all that can heavily uh, infect, uh, uh, contribute towards the periodontial destruction and periodontitis. So that is the condition you can uh, you can appreciate in the patients with the uh, elderly couple. Don't, now a very important part that need to be discussed for the elderly patient, they are the orofacial pain. So orofacial pain in the didactic population, basically what is orofacial pain? 
So first we need to understand according to IASP, the orofacial pain is defined as an unpleasant emotional and sensory experience that occurs due to actual or potential tissue damage or described in terms of such damage. So if we are able to understand what is pain, only then we can understand the or various ways through which we can uh, remove that pain. In case of elderly, the prevalence of the pain, it, it is estimated to be approximately 25 to 88%. So it is not only the one type of pain which is prevalent at one time. There are many different types of orofacial pain. The patient will come to you when he or she is visiting the dental clinic. So beside dental causing pain, there are several other orofacial pains which you are able to see in case of the elderly population. And those include the, because of the contraction-based movements, because they are affected due to the different type of the uh, parafunctional habits of dystonia or bruxisms. And then it can be due to the muscle pain because of the fibromyalgia or uh, other muscular pains, uh, muscle soreness. Then there are different type of vascular pains, just like temporal arthritis and uh, other uh, simple arthritis. Then that there is a post herpetic neuralgia or other type of the neuralgic pain because of the involvement of trigeminal neuralgia, because of the involvement of sinopalatine neuralgia. So many neuralgic pains we have seen that they are most prevalent in as the age progresses. Then there is another type of pain, which is very uh, commonly, most commonly, I'm going to say that it's uh, encountered in elderly population. That is the burning mouth syndrome, or which is also called as the uh, dysgeusia. So then the uh, occlusal uh, dysesthesia and the pain of the psychological origin. All these pain, when they are in a single patient, it is very difficult to diagnose that with, which is the pain from which the patient is, uh, I mean to say, which is patient is affected most. So uh, after going to orofacial pain, the relationship between the oral and the general health is very important to understand in case of geriatric population. Now we have seen only the one part of the point that how the oral health is there, how the oral health is being affected in geriatric population and what are the various structural changes we are able to see. Now it's important to understand the relationship between the oral and the geriatric health oral and the general health in geriatric population. So oral health has a crucial impact on the functional, psychological and economical aspects of the oral quality of the life. So the oral cavity may act as a portal of entry for microbial infections. Why I'm saying this thing, why it is important because in geriatric population, I mean to say elderly, there are many metabolic and systemic disorders, systemic diseases, they are going on. So sometimes the oral cavity become a focus of infection through which uh, the infection goes inside and complicates the systemic conditions. I'll uh, come up with a few examples. Just like a, a, a periodontal disease has also has been associated with the risk of developing a cardiovascular disease because of the cytokinin elected by the oral inflammation that might affect the initiation or progress of the disease. On the other hand, the periodontal uh, microbes in the arterial plaques are associated with the narrowing of the vessels and the beginning of the atherosclerosis or even the intimation of the starting of the blood clot formation in the blood vessels. The chronic periodontitis also exhibits increased level of tissue necrotic factor alpha that can cause the liver to increase the production of triglycerides and decrease the amount of the HDL which is a type of beneficial cholesterol. So these are a few examples through which we can just uh, have a uh, importance that how important it is to uh, maintain the oral hygiene or oral health of a geriatric population because sometimes through by not maintaining the oral health, we are contributing towards the uh, systemic uh, disorders in these patients. So oral and general health, they both are uh, related to each other. So after that, <coughs> There is a, a one uh, term nowadays, it's very commonly used that is geriatric syndrome. So what is this geriatric syndrome and how it is related to the oral health? So geriatric syndrome is nothing but it refers to the multifactorial health conditions that occurs when the accumulated effects of impairment in multiple systems. That means that when the patient is suffering with multiple systemic dis uh, disorders and all these uh, disorders, they combine together and ultimately produces an effect over the person's uh, a health that is person is vulnerable to the uh, situational uh, challenges. So if I'll talk uh, very concisely about the relationship between the various risk factors and geriatric syndromes and poor oral health, you can just have a, a look of this flow chart diagram where uh, the very nicely it is being depicted that how, uh, how that uh, risk factors, various risk factors of increased age, congenitive impairment, functional impairment, impaired mobility of teeth, all these along with the fragility and the poor oral health effects along uh, with the added added effect of the polypharmacy which is very commonly seen in case of elderly population that leads to the uh, multi-morbidities 
these multi morbidities may be in the form of diabetes neuro uh, neuro uh, degeneration disorders alzheimer's disease or cardiovascular disease so this is a diagrammatic this is a diagrammatic presentation that how a geriatric patient it uh, it is being how geriatric patient is linked with the uh, geriatric syndrome and uh, polypharmacy and the oral health of the oral health so <coughs> now coming the role of the oral physician after going through the various details that what are the structural effects uh, how that uh, oral mucosa t pyrodontium tm joint everything is being affected in the old age now it's a time to come up across the role of the oral physician so being oral physician how we are going to manage all these things so uh, according to the world health organization one of the global role global goals of the oral health is that at the age of 65 and above there should be 25% reduction in the present level of edentulous status so presence of the 20th that is another goal which is being given by the world health organization so these are big taking this as a background so american academy of oral medicine they come across with an oscar which is nothing but is oscar is a very concise short form which is nothing but the multi uh, dimensional assessment tool for planning the oral health care in elderly people so what is this oscar O stands for oral, S stands for systemic, C stands for capability, A stands for autonomy, and R stands for reality. So OSCAR serves to guide a dentist in identifying the dental, medical, pharmacological, functional, ethical, and physical factors that need to be considered before doing any dental treatment. So we should consider this OSCAR. If we'll, I'll go in bit detail about that, what is this OSCAR? OSCAR or oral, oral? Oral means what is the patient oral status? There is a scoring towards every alphabet that is O S C A R. We come across the score, and if we think that OSCAR is uh, this much, we need to plan the treatment in a similar way. So oral means what is the patient oral health status? Systemic that means what medical condition does the patient have, and what treatment is the individual undergoing? Capability, what is the patient's functional and mobility levels? and autonomy is the patient capable of making the decisions and finally the reality how important is the oral health in the big picture and what are the limitations so if we'll keep this oscar in mind before doing with the any dental treatment i think we should not face much problems <clears throat> while dealing with the geriatric patient so uh, before going in the management detail there, these are the few uh, uh, oral uh, care tips normally we in the routinely we used to give it to the elderly population when they used to visit our clinics or in the dental hospitals ask to quit with a minimum smoking then encourage them to use excessive water i recommend the use of the fluoride toothpaste and then use of the, some mouthwashes so these are the very routinely uh, i mean to say tips which are given by the dentist towards this thing but this is not the, this is uh, now this is a time where we should give a special consideration towards the dental care rather than giving this normal uh, uh, dental tips why it is important to give all these instructions number one so almost all the systemic uh, diseases which are more prevalent in that elderly people they have the oral manifestations and sometimes the first sign of which can be seen by the dental uh, clinician so we should be very alert while doing the diagnostic part and uh, while doing the diagnosis of an elderly population so mostly elderly will be taking medications both by prescription or over the counter which can cause a dry mouth or xerostomia that indirectly can contribute to many oral conditions as a patient age and as a result of the amount of drug use that occurs over the lifetime the drugs they are metabolized differently so i am to say that we need to understand about the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics of the drugs in detail before prescribing any drug to that this uh, uh, this population uh, in geriatric population the dental surgeon must have a consideration about the drug regimen and the patient is on and then in, we need to plan it out which drug need to be given and which type of interactions the patient might face when we are prescribing uh, drugs or medications to that elderly population then oral infections that have a very good impact very significant impact upon the morbidity and mortality uh, in these patients uh, i have already explained why is it so because sometimes the oral infections or the bad oral hygiene that act as a focus of infection through which we incur if we are not keeping care of that oral hygiene Uh, that might complicate the systemic condition in elderly population and we come up with the many problems so finally that there is decline in the congenitive function with the aging that is again a major problem that is a, a barrier while treating the elderly population then a uh, very concisely i'll talk about the oral health and the nutritional health factors so in case of the geriatric population uh, we can see the two type of the people either they are malnourished or they be obese and overweight 
so the malnourishment occurs in the uh, this population because of the sensory impairment of the taste and smell they are not able to taste uh, properly and smell that's why they are not consuming the daily routine food and then there might be a loss of the skeleton muscle and the strength then redistribution of the body fat can occur and finally the dental loss because of which the patient is not able to chew the food and ultimately land up with the malnutrition and the gi disturbances they are very uh, prevalent in case of the old age in case of a person if it is your if he or she is obese or overweight the, this that might occurs because of changes in the dietary intake the high consumption of the caloric diet or caloric food or the high consumption of the processed food and lack of the physical activity because of the prevalent uh, orthopedic problems so again there are uh, there are five factors through which we encounter the poor diet uh, poor diet or nutritional status in the elderly <clears throat> number one the mental or the physical functioning because of the depressed mood physical disabilities anorexia then the food assess the lack of the food assess towards the elderly because of the lack of mobility because of the difficulty in making the meals so these are the, some factors that will uh, that will decrease the overall nutrition in these patients and the overall health which is also affecting directly over the nutrition that is multiple medication polypharmacy that is a major problem which we encounter in case of this population then surgical procedures loss of appetite dental decay pathological conditions so these health conditions they again lead to the back or the daily uh, again lead to the poor diet in case of the elderly then reduce a uh, social contact if the person is not coming in social contact they start feeling uh, socially neglected or poor social interaction then uh, lives uh, alone in this case a patient uh, loses his, his or her appetite and finally the health behaviors the uh, smoking deleterious habits lack of exercise all these again contribute to the poor oral health condition in case of the geriatrics so before starting with the uh, dental trend we need to divide it how to do the in case of geriatric population there are three basically ways through which we can give a dental care uh, to a geriatric uh, to the geriatric patients number one counseling that is very important to manage their stress to manage their loneliness number two is the preventive care and <coughs> number is the three is the restorative so uh, it is recommended by the world health organization that the elderly make dental visit at least every 6 months for clinical revaluation depending upon the ability to perform the oral hygiene so every 6 3 to 6 months uh, every geriatric uh, person need to be uh, visit the nearest dental center so that we can come across now managing of that uh, management of the stress so what is basically stress and this is a very important thing to understand because stress uh, whenever we we talk about the stress uh, I, initially i talked about the orofacial pain so everything uh, orofacial pain it's always having a axis 1 and axis 2 component one axis 1 component is that part which is due to actual tissue damage whereas axis 2 is the uh, psychological component which leads to the uh, uh, increase in the pain component of the uh, uh, pain component so managing a stress in elderly will solve many things will solve many problems so what is basically stress stress is a psychological physiological and behavior response by an individual when they perceive a lack of equilibrium between the demands placed upon them and their ability to meet those demands which over the time uh, period of time leads to the ill health so this is a, a very nice definition which is being given by palmer so uh, indirectly if i'll talk about the stress indirectly it contributes towards the causation of the stress related oral lesions or oral uh, or lesions just like a recurrent abscess ulcers oral lichen planus xerostomia bruxism uh, burning mouth syndrome etc so managing stress means managing all these things in a majority so first thing is uh, ask the patient to just sit comfortably on the dental chair then you ask that then then you can counsel that patient geriatric patient or elderly to understand the stress that what is basically stress then identify the stress sources from where he or she is getting the stress and finally to learn to recognize the stress signals by either through biofeedback therapy or many other therapies are there through which a patient can come across yes his or her stress level is increasing we need to control that level so and then we can implement the health stress management strategies those strategies can be meditation yoga etc through which a person can manage his or her stress level and the many diseases just like an ampedias or other things we can easily control then make a self care a priority we should make the patient understand that their own self is most important to keep themselves good in a good condition that is very important and finally ask for a support when needed so these are the ways through which we can manage the stress level 
So the various uh, medications, sometimes they are required to manage the stress in the elderly. That includes the tiamazole, that is 0.125 milligram, that is used almost at the bedtime, and dizepam 5 to 10 milligrams OD, if uh, the stress is not managed by all uh, the non-medicated parts. Mm -hmm. So then, then coming to, uh, uh, as already discussed, the polypharmacy, which is very, very commonly seen in case of elderly. And why it is important to understand this aspect? That means uh, the concern is uh, for uh, body, uh, concern for the elderly is very important. Uh, why? Because number one, the greater risk of adverse uh, drug reactions because of the metabolic changes and reduced drug clearance associated with aging. Secondly, the potential drug to drug interaction. The person might be consuming many drugs. So these drugs, they have a multiple type of interactions. If we are not knowing it, we land up with some type of the difficulties. So then it lead to decrease in the medication compliance. The overall quality of the life is decreased and unnecessary drug expenses that are bared by the person. So this is uh, basically how the polypharmacy is uh, uh, practiced in elderly. Uh, many, many studies have been conducted and they come across globally that have shown that almost on average two to nine medications per day are being taken up by the elderly people. So uh, this uh, this is a photograph, very nice, funny photograph, where you will see that one elderly person, he is talking to their neighbors and he's saying that everyone, uh, all the pets, they are named according to one of my medications. So this is how the poly polypharmacy is being practiced. So before in going in much detail, it is uh, very important to understand about the pharmacokinetics and dynamics of the drugs, which we are going to give, which we are going to give to, I mean to say dose, uh, dosage of drugs, which we need to decide for the elderly. That depends upon the pharmacokinetics and dynamics. So in case of the pharmacokinetics, absorption, distribution, metabolism, and elimination. So these are the four points which are uh, covered under pharmacokinetics and all the four things, all the four steps, they are altered in case of the older people. How they are altered? In case of the absorption, the possibility there is a reduced intestinal absorption of the agents requiring active transport. Then there is a reduced first pass metabolism. And in case of distribution, altered pre fractions of some of the drugs they are seen. <laughs> altered volume distributions they are seen. There is increased permeability of the blood wind barrier. So uh, if I'll talk about the metabolism, there is delay in the metabolism of high clearance drugs. And, and excretion, there is increased half lifetime of the water soluble drugs. So these are the points we should keep while prescribing any analgesic, any antibiotic or any type of steroid to uh, uh, steroid to genetic population. Suppose a patient is coming to use and uh, we need to uh, prescribe a steroid to the patient. We need to take care that that uh, uh, steroid, if we uh, give a high dose of steroid to the patient, immediately there is increase in the uh, acidity because of the increase in the amount of axial production. So always try to accompany that uh, steroidal part along with the antacid and try to give uh, try to give a lot after the food. The dose should be given after the food. So these are few things we need to keep regarding the pharmacokinetics. And in case of pharmacodynamics, the medications they are that are lyophilic may have a prolonged effect due to the increased amount of the body fat. <coughs> the drugs that are hydrophilic may have a more rapid increase in the concentration in the blood because of the less water. So these changes often necessitate the lower dosage of the medication. So management of the xerostomia. Xerostomia is uh, uh, one of the very, very commonly encountered problem or oral health. Uh, oral problem, oral disease encountered in the elderly population, uh, along with the, uh, uh, with the various other managements of the xerostomia. First thing we can ask the patient uh, regarding the sippage of the water on the uh, frequent basis. Next is if the things are not solved by this thing, then we need to step over the local slivery stimulation or, sense, uh, or systemic slivery stimulation. So xerostomia occurs because of elderly, because of atrophy of the slivery glands, because of the multiple polypharmacy drugs which the patient is consuming, or many other reasons are there. So now, how to manage it? Uh, if by the normal sipping process, if it is not managed, then we need to look for the local systemic slivery stimulations. <coughs> In the local slivery stimulation, the slivery substitutes such as the carboxymethyl cellulose can be used. Water-soluble lubricants such as KY jellies, tyrogel, Biotin products all can be used to by form or which can be applied with the help of the brush or a finger. Then adhesive the discs are there, just like aura moist, aura coat, xyle melts. All these can be continuously releasing the xylitol, and uh, they have a flavoring agents that stimulate the production of the saliva. But the main disadvantages we are facing with the local stivy stimulation, they are limited effectiveness during the night when the symptoms are most severe. And secondly, they do not deliver the physiological constituents that gives saliva its essential antimicrobial lubricant and the demineralizing functions. No doubt we are providing only the liquid part, but we are not giving every function of saliva 
to the patient in the form of the artificial saliva stimulants. But if this artificial, uh, if this local saliva stimulant, they will not work. We need to be dependent upon the systemic saliva stimulation, and the drugs which are most commonly <coughs> used in case of the systemic saliva stimulation that includes pilocarpine, three to five milligram three times a day, semimeline thirty milligram three times a day, or bethamicol that is ten to fifty milligram three to four times a day. So all these drugs can be used only in a stepwise manner. First, try to get only by the counseling part. Not acting, go through the local stimulation. Still not acting, then we need to think over the <coughs> systemic stimulation after the xerostomia. So next important thing is how to prevent the dental caries. How to reach at the WHO target of 20 teeth at the after 60 plus age. So prevention of dental caries among elderly. So we need to ask the patients to use some super saturated calcium and phosphate solutions that may help to remineralize the heart tissues and decrease the potential for caries. Then fluorides, the use of fluoride varnishes should be considered at least twice a year for the patients with a high risk caries and 1.1% sodium fluoride can be prescribed for daily use to further enhance the remineralization. So dental caries, then prevention of the periodontal diseases which are worse affected. So as we should regularly counsel the patient, uh, elderly patient to use a soft bristle brush and use the bass technique that allows a minimum tooth abrasion and formation of the V notches. Then the mechanical plaque removal that should be done at protein levels so that the gingival recession can be prevented. Then the use of chlorhexidine 0.12% rinses that will be well accepted to prevent the, uh, to, uh, to prevent the periodontal diseases. <coughs> then the introduction of the dental implants in edentulous patients. They are a very important uh, component because nowadays we are seeing that the number of teeth they are decreasing. And uh, because of the resorption of teeth, we are not able to replace the teeth with the help of the dentures. And secondly, the dentures, they are only uh, working up to 25% of the normal teeth. That means they're uh, they only 25% efficient in biting the food and providing the nutrition. So dental implants, they are a very good option in case of the edentulous patients uh, through which we can, uh, uh, we can maintain that overall periodontal status and bone levels in these patients. So now coming to a very important aspect that is oral mucosal variations or lesions seen in the geriatric people. So uh, the incidence of the oral mucosal lesions, they range from 12 to 61.4% according to the various epidemiological studies that are related to the elderly people. So or the World Health Organization, uh, they have come up with the uh, thing that if uh, there is any mucosal lesion that persists for three to four weeks, despite all attempts to remove the suspected etiology, should you always plan for some type of biopsy. So uh, overall, the oral mucosal variations, they'll be divided into class one and class two. Uh, I've not mentioned it where class one, class two, but class one represent the oral mucosal variations. So what are what is the difference between oral mucosal variations and oral mucosal lesions? There are two terms. So variations, they'll be classified as class one by the World Health Organization or WHO or and oral mucosal lesions as class two. So oral mucosal variations are the conditions which, are, which have a well-established pathogenesis <coughs> that present no health impairment and they require no treatment, only a follow-up is required. And they are very frequently seen as, with, as we are advancing towards the age. So various oral health variations, they are normal variants, but they'll be a bit prominent. So what are those variations which are seen in the elderly people? Some mucosal varices, fordyce granules, coated tongue, torus mandibularis, torus uh, uh, palatinus, fissure tongue, hairy tongue, geographical tongue, linea alba, leukodema. So these are <coughs> few of the uh, oral variations which are very commonly seen. Here is a pic that are showing. This is a, uh, this is a collection of all these lesions uh, uh, in uh, my department. We have collected all that uh, photographs in the department to about the various oral mucosal variants, variations. And uh, oral mucosal lesions, what are lesions? They originated from pathological process, just like having a specific etiology, treatment, modality, and uh, as well as the prognosis. So the pathological oral mucosal lesions, they'll be further categorized into six groups. That is vesicobulous, red and white, denture-based lesions, pigmented lesions, and then exophytic lesions, and finally the miscellaneous lesions. So these are, this is the photograph that are showing the various type of the vesicobullous uh, red and white lesions or denture based lesions among elderly population. So <coughs> how to diagnose and how to go with the management of all these diseases as we are already discussing that first, which is, it is very important to make a diagnosis that whether it is a type of the congenital disease 
<clears throat> whether it is a type of the disease which is due to deleterious habits so this is a flow chart diagram which will help you to make it out that what type of oral lesion uh, the elderly person is carrying and then we can manage that lesion accordingly so after that oral mucosal lesions and variations the next important type of uh, uh, i mean to say the disorder or the disease which is encountered in that elderly that is a glossodynia or the burning mouth syndrome a glossodynia is a chronic intra oral burning sensation or dysesthesia without clinical evidence causes you are not able to it's a it's a diagnosis it's a diagnosis which can which is made normally on the basis of exclusion and it is one of the most commonly medically and uh, unexplained oral symptom seen in the geriatric dental patients according to uh, ihs that is international headache society the burning mouth syndrome is defined as an intra oral burning sensation or dysesthesia or recurring daily for more than 2 hours per day over more than 3 months without clinical evidence of causative lesions so the various factors that will lead to the burning mouth syndrome elderly that includes neuropathic component central sensitization headaches congenitive behavior depression bipolarity anxiety all these things will contribute towards the burning mouth syndrome in these patients now how to diagnose that the patient is having a burning mouth syndrome as i already told that it is a one of the diagnosis which is made by exclusion but still there is a one criteria if we can follow that criteria we can easily come across that yes patient is suffering with the burning mouth syndrome <coughs> number 1 in case of burning mouth syndrome the pain may immigrate or spread independently of the autonomy or of the anatomy of the peripheral nerves that means it there is, it's not following any type of the particular path through which it will be uh, radiating secondly the pain it is spontaneous that worsens as the day progresses number 3 no pain during eating sleeping and and concentrating on something the symptoms they'll be relieved by putting some type of uh, candy or the chewing gum in the oral cavity the fear of cancerophobia that is again a very important point noticed in case of the burning mouth syndrome patients regardless of the nature of the onset the symptom persists for many years the patient is having a sensitivity towards the hot and cold food the symptoms increase by taking or something uh, stress or fatigue the little effects with the nasage steroids and gargling with other type of the uh, mouthwashes is seen dyscosia that is a loss of taste disturbance such as the bitter or the metallic taste is seen subjective dry mouth is seen then except for all these things the patient try to avoid the company of other people so uh, how to how to deal with that burning mouth syndrome uh, i mean to say we, have, we understand that yes burning mouth syndrome is a uh, syndrome is a type of a group of other uh, things we need to uh, diagnose before uh, we'll go in detail so one thing is to diagnose and manage the local and systemic cofactors related to the secondary burning mouth syndrome we need to come up with the oral examination salivary parameters hematological parameters nutritional deficiencies hormonal disturbances medication effects para functional habits contact allergic and psychological factors if we are uh, just going to all these things uh, we are not able to find out some etiology that you can say that yes you are going towards the burning mouth syndrome and in case of the management the multi disciplinary management of the primary or the idiopathic bms can be done this is by the use of some topical application like clonazepam and systemically you can alpha lipoic acid selective certain reuptake inhibitors or congenitive therapy can be done but based upon the expert opinion some common clinical practice so topical application of the capsaicin doxepin and even ligno can be used so all these are the uh, management uh, ways through which we can manage the burning mouth syndrome in a patient now we all know that aging is characterized by a reduction in the overall sensory perception so uh, how the sensory perception is uh, reduced among more, most of the older people uh, hypogos uh, hypogosia that is diminished sense of taste is frequently encountered this this is because of multiple factors number one psychological changes such as impairment in the taste receptors taste receptors then poor health conditions or xerostomia then deteriorating uh, olfactory functions because of the damage to the cordae tympani or the lingual nerve damage then poor health status because of deficiency of zinc vitamin b12 or the sodium deficiencies then chronic smoking polypharmacy multiple systemic disorders radiotherapy chemotherapy so all these things are uh, con contributing towards the this go hypogosia or the altered taste sensation this thing so management of this thing first as a patient to com uh, patient complaint regarding the taste uh, disturbance then smell disturbance on the history should be come across then the taste disturbance or the mixed taste or the smell disturbance uh, on history that will be done then ultimately the review of the medications all those medications which a person is consuming we should go through it then examine the oral cavity and dentition 
and finally if change is required we need to do it or ultimately we need to refer to that i mean to say we need to refer for his uh, uh, or medical practitioner to come across if there is some, some systemic disorder so these are the ways through which we can manage the hypogosia in these patients and in case of the dental management we can go for the cessation of the use of the offending medications zinc gluconate and the dosage of 140 mg per day can be used alpha lipoic acid in the dosage of 600 mg per day for few months may restore the taste of the patient severe dysgosia topical anesthetics just a lignocaine gel may be helpful tricyclic antidepressants and clonazepam can be given and if in patient with a xerostomy and artificial saliva can be prescribed to the patient with a uh, uh, therapeutic option so all these things uh, we are uh, going to encounter before uh, just i am concluding my presentation uh, before uh, just i am concluding my presentation by saying that the management of the oral diseases in elderly will improve not only the conditions of their mouth but also their overall health and well being dentic medicine no doubt it's in the infancy and dentic dentistry is almost non existing in india there is an urgent need to develop these specialties to utilize the great human resources available in india to meet the challenges of the healthcare need for the elderly in the 21st century so oral health can be both a benchmark as well as a determinant of the quality of life rather than that of the length of the life span so oral health is very important so as it is said by the uh, as it is uh, well said by the avril <coughs> uh, as it is uh, well said by the avril the eclipse of the life has perfect symmetry wide in the middle and both gently narrowing what it means the elderly who have been seen as growing stood with crossed fingers to see their prodigy take the first step need a little drop of love a small word of care and an extra minute of patient sharing to make their life worth living the concept of oral health is all inclusive one uh, embracing both the therapy and the <clears throat> solidarity so these are the various references uh, i have used for my preparation and at last uh, thanks uh, one of all for your patience uh, listening so i invite any type of uh, this is the, uh, the from the background institute from where i am coming aligarh muslim university so i welcome any question or query from your side sir. thank you dr pratiman it was a wonderful lecture and very informative and you have been uh, widely narrated about the various aspect of healthcare and the geriatric patients and the management and about the oral manifestations etc uh, i think uh, if you have any doubts any of the delegates kindly you can unmute yourself and you can raise the questions and uh, kindly accept our uh, e set e um, certificate of appreciation to you thank you so much sir thank you sir we'll mail sir. to you the things to you any yes. questions from anyone i think it is crystal clear presentation and you have been uh, well narrated everything i thank so you I once again for uh, accepted our invitation and uh, deliberately narrated the well about the uh, topic and sir in a limited time i uh, i tried to cover uh, uh, concisely yeah, about every aspect of the uh, genetic uh, yeah, exactly. population uh, yes, uh, there are many things need to be discussed exactly, that is a exactly. endless discussion yeah, but yes if, if if there is any doubt anyone can just call me and give me a mail regarding any doubt uh, regarding the solution so definitely definitely i yeah. will share the details to them for for any doubts And thank thank you, you so thank much. You so And much, before I conclude, I uh, take an opportunity to thank our principal, sir, Dr. Manish Goel, for giving the opportunity to uh, give him permission to organize such national event program, online CD program. And uh, I take an opportunity once again to thank our uh, national IOMR uh, body, that uh, President Dr. Vinay Kumar Reddy and uh, the Secretary, Honorable Secretary Dr. Prashant Sharma. and the treasurer of the dikti patnakar for their uh, support and uh, accepted our invitation and uh, they given that in association to organize such online cd program today and lastly i thank to my faculty members dr upendra malik uh, professor dr garima ayuri professor dr anjali naik reader and mr shilpa shivastav the senior lecturer who and my phd students who supported me in organizing this event. and thank you all of you for the delegates who have uh, shown interest 
and participated in all this uh, this particular CD program. And your e participation certificates will mail to you within a week. Thank you, one and all. I lost a thank to Pratimana Marma once again for giving an opportunity and accepted our invitation to be a speaker on this forum. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir.